Hello everybody, welcome back to Cougar City Gaming. Today we are bringing you something really cool is our Cougar City podcast. We have Bob, we have Jen, and then for JPY we have Bolt coming in and filling in for the team. Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? Good, thanks for having me. Hello, hello. You're welcome. Doing all right. You're welcome. <laughs> So, um, hello, hello, welcome. This this is pretty new. Um, don't don't kill us. We're just starting this out, and uh, we have a couple of topics ready for you that we're just gonna discuss and see how um, the game has been going on. I know uh, Jen has been uh, wanting to talk about you know how to start up an ESL. So, uh, Jen, what do you think is the best way to start out an ESL? Okay, so a little bit of background on me first is that I am a year two player, um, so came in a year after the game came out, and I've been a healer main the whole time. I've only just made a second character maybe a year ago, um, so I was a Templar main the whole time, and now I have a warden as well as a DPS, and I just started a tank. Um, but starting out in the game, um, Bolt and I started the game together, and we started out by coming into the game, not knowing anything about it. We just knew that we had a friend in the game that played it, so we wanted to come and play with them. And we started from the beginning of Daggerfall Covenant, and we just quested the whole thing. Um, now, I know that most people that join ESO hop in right away, and they they know that it's like you want to get to max level right away. You want champion level 160 gear. You want the highest champion level possible. So you can unlock all your champion points in the in the trees, um, but I just want to throw it out there that like quest coming in and questing and playing the stories like it is such a well put together game and the stories are interesting, and the timeline of how everything happens through the game is is, is a lot of fun. Like take your time with it. This game isn't going anywhere. It's a huge game that they keep adding content to, so there's no reason to be in a rush and max level and miss out on everything that the game has to offer. Because just doing like dungeons and trials and the reason for being max level is like you don't have that's only a small portion of the game. Yeah, I mean, Bob, I don't know if anybody else has you know thoughts on that. Bob, how did you start out? <laughs> Me well, uh, ESO specifically. So if we're just talking Elder Scrolls Online, um, I'm a day one player. Um, however, I go all the way back to like Arena. Uh, so I've been playing the Elder Scrolls universe for well over 20 years oh shit um that's awesome so so the elder scrolls online i got drawn to it because everything started to become more multiplayer online more mmo and and then uh i saw some gameplay and it was so the the combat is so active right it's it's an active combat um lots of button pushes stuff is going you're moving around you're not stationary like a lot of the mmos were um you know you're seeing your your dungeons and dragons your never winters and all that you're you're relatively stationary and you're doing a combination of button pushes your turn-based um, games yeah yeah and so um i got into elder scrolls um day one uh and it it is a completely different game now compared to what it was day one um, and so anybody that's starting the game now, I completely agree with Jen. Don't, don't rush out and do the quote unquote power level. Don't, don't grind, um, Skyreach. Don't grind, um, in Craglorn. Don't learn your character. That's the biggest thing that you do when you're questing. And when you're, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to get some, some big, XP jumps, do some random dungeons when they when they pop up and are active at level 10. Um, you know, you can do and go into the quest and you can do a random dungeon. Not only are you going to get experience for doing the dungeon and killing stuff, you'll get a skill point. You'll you'll meet up with other players. They can help you along in your journey. Um, if you got questions, you can ask questions. Most people in the community are very helpful. Uh, which is different from a lot of the online games like the CODs and the and the Fortnite. So a lot of that community can be a little toxic. A little, yeah. <laughs> I mean, tox, that word "toxic" is thrown around a lot. Um, 
but you know, belittling, uh, you know, make fun of you for being new and, and that kind of thing. Um, ESO, it really isn't that way. There's a few. I mean, you're going to get them. Um, but do your quests. Also, the great thing about the quests, you learn your skills. You learn what they do. Read your skills when you get ready to morph them into the new version. Um, also, doing the quest, you get your skill points, uh, which you're going to need anyway. So if you just do the grind, you're going to miss out on so much XP and so many skill points that you're going to need, and you're going to have to go back and do them anyway. So just do them along the way. And, and then when you when you feel like you're ready to, to move on to the harder, you know, the harder vet content, then at least you have uh, a full character that's built and you can change morphs and you got skill points to, to put certain places if you learn a new skill or a new line. Um, and so that's kind of that's my my thing. I, I don't want to power don't I don't recommend power leveling for anybody. Now, if you're a vet and you've been around for five six years and this is your 18th tune you're putting onto your account by all means go ahead and power level you know what you're doing but that that's kind of my take on it now you're not gonna believe how um i started out it's it's actually quite funny because i i also started out um kind of early in a way like bob did but uh we we played uh my husband and i played Skyrim and um, Oblivion and all those Elder Scroll lore games that were before Elder Scrolls Online. But I didn't even know Elder Scrolls Online was coming out until my husband, Merc271, he, he actually told me, he's like, hey, one of our friends, one of our mutual friends is on this game playing. So a week into the launch on um, not PC, but on console, we get the game and we just at that time we only had one playstation um i don't know what we were thinking but we only had one place we would have marital disputes <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so we we made one account because we didn't, really didn't think it was gonna like basically be like we are now um so we made one account and we were both playing the account um together even though we you know one of us had the controller um there was one time that we you know one of us would take the controller play a couple of storylines then the other would do it but we were there together with each other and basically it got to the point where we just hated that <laughs> that uh <laughs> my husband was like hey this isn't working out we're, let's go to Walmart. Let's go pick up another PlayStation because it's bad. Um, it really sucks. Elder Scrolls made them buy another PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And Elder Scrolls made us buy another PlayStation. Um, and the funny part is that the account, you know, it was my account, but then he made his account and he started playing through all the stuff that we, we had already played. And he, you know, in, in a way, he did power level-ish through that, but um, then he... Yeah, to, he felt like he had to catch up. Yeah, he, he caught up with with his uh, own account, but then, you know, he stopped. And that's, that's really a thing that a lot of players that just start off on this game, like Bob was saying, they, they just grind it out and such. And that can be really disheartening for somebody, um, in my opinion. I, I really don't think they they will get the full feel of the game if you just power level and power grind. Yeah, you get burnout and you're like, what is there else to do? And mm -hmm. exactly, I mean, a perfect example is Izzard in our guild. He the first six years of the game, he was just like, instead of uh, damage per second, he was doing gold per second. He was just farming right. the game. Uh, he really didn't get to enjoy anything outside of like what is better gold per second than you know anything else and now that he's doing other stuff besides that um i know he feels really happy because he found another content of the game and i think it's mm -hmm. just revitalized the game for him absolutely yeah join guilds talk to other people who are you know playing the game different ways you can find groups doing things that you want to do and when you're ready to change activities you can find other people that, you know, have other interests also because there is so much to do. Yeah, speaking uh, about so much other things to do, 
um let's talk about project vitality um once everybody has really done you know the questing and and such there there is something that nef has started um it's mainly on on um con not console but PC? mainly on pc and but he's really gearing everybody in console to to do this like everybody that has the elder scrolls online should be you know joining to do this and we are trying to do this in our guild too um i know muscle 420 has been um, trying to post uh basically you know rosters to to help everybody do it so what do you guys think about project vitality and how it can improve and for players to enjoy the game Uh, well, I can jump in here. I know that um, from seeing groups being trying to put together new trials groups, uh, there seems to be a lot of hesitancy for people to want to join up. And I don't know, you know, what people's individual hesitancy is for that. Uh, I don't know if it's because they feel like they don't have experience and that, you know, when you go into a Craiglord, people are already expected to know, like, What's the priority hit? What am I supposed to do? I have to hit, like, so much damage per second. So people need to realize, like, if I'm in these teams and when it's time to actually run them, these are, like, right from the beginning runs. Like, there's no expectation. You don't have to feel bad about going in and asking questions and being on mic and just playing your way. And it's just an introduction for you to go in and learn. So that's what I really like about it is, you know, People should sign up and get involved with these if they're if they're new to trials and haven't you know even done pug once before or maybe they have done pugs but they really didn't know what was going on and what they were supposed to be doing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can add on that a little bit too. Is like, not everyone who plays the game now was like a god when they first started. We all started somewhere, even if it was just doing pugs and craglawn learning. And I wish back then there was a team to like take me through and learn all the trials. That's a really good idea to get people started and get people interested in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's 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 amazing that we do have some players that are willing to to actually like get down to the dirt because it you really have to in order to to get these um, newer players into the end game, uh, at least the PVE end game. And I mean, we are kind of trying to do that. Um, not only in Muscles group, but the Turbo team. Now, I know they, they're only doing normal trials at the moment, but we are really just going from the ground up. I know that's the way we built our chill team as well. And yeah, it's a great starting point. It's a great starting point, and it lets you go in and see exactly. the pathway. Like, for example, in comparison right now, the new trial, Dreadsail Reef, came out. And... On vet, you know, I've run it only up until the first boss for a few pulls, but on normal, we've obviously ran all the way through. Mm -hmm. Vets and normals can be completely different, but when it comes to a big trial and you walk through the door and you're like, I don't know where to go next. Well, normal is the way to start, you know, like learn where you're going, where the team needs to be, what the priorities are, and you can build on that. It's all about like building the team on that and learning what happens there before you really start to try to like challenge them. Yeah, I mean, and the trials are a lot of fun too. Like a lot of them, the mechanics and stuff, they're a lot of fun. Yeah, especially the new one. Involved. Especially the new oh, one. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of mechanic heavy fights in there. And here's the thing in, it's interesting, but every time a new trial comes out, um, I know, you know, PC gets the new trials before we do um, on PTS, and they can kind of see what's going on in there first. But. We're kind of learning, the console players are actually learning from the PC players. The PC players are kind of like the mentors of ours in a way. Because they're, they're going in there and trying to figure everything out. And then they're teaching us that stuff through, you know, YouTube videos and such. So, I mean, it, it's still happening um, at a higher level, even though people don't see it. So, I really like the fact that Neff has started doing this and he started at the lower level and um, you know we have a couple teams that are doing that right now as well um i mean bob what do you think of project vitality well i i like that he's trying to make it um yeah you know, he's got a decent following and so he's trying to reach you know to reach out 
you know, within his following and then the followers' discords and their discords' discords, right? Mm -hmm. She's trying to kind of, uh, you know, teach one, reach one is kind of what business talks about, right? Um, but, uh, I mean, ultimately, like, the hardest hard modes, the vet, you know, speed runs and that kind of stuff, I mean, we're talking about a very small portion of the community who who views trials as end game, right? Mm -hmm. you, you know, it, it is actually a very small community. Um, and the only way that this game is going to survive and keep up and keep putting out trials and, and that kind of stuff is if we right. can teach some of the newer players how to do trials or how to put a team together or how to do the mechanics of, of certain trials. So, you know, it, it really does come, come down to more experienced players you know, reaching down and, and grabbing that new player and going, hey, there's nothing to be scared of. Come here. Let me show you how to do this. You know, uh, when the Craglorn trials came out, the very first trials that came out, I mean, 15 to 20K was godly DPS. I mean, that was top-end DPS, if you could do 15K DPS. And so, I, I mean... Imagine it, doing how that was 15K DPS. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're talking, you know, you're talking that's what top end DPS was back yeah, then. Yeah, that was and so, the VR 14 days. You remember that, Bob? Yeah, VR, VR 14 days. Exactly. Oh, yes. you're, you were a vet rank 14. Um, we didn't have CP and stuff. And so, um, you know, you had to do mechanics and you had to learn stuff and where to stand and what was a priority target and what you had to focus down and you had to coordinate. And that's the biggest thing that I think people get scared of. I mean, you were talking about like why people don't join trial groups. Because I see in discords, I've been I've been part of many guilds and many discords, and they all have this, you know, this this whole training. You know, hey, come come learn trials, and and you know, people are trying to do it. Um, and I think people get scared because of some of those YouTube videos. They see the three minute Griffin heart and they're like, oh, I can't do that. Like that is so unachievable for even most of the groups that are playing trials now on console. Exactly. <laughs> like, and they don't you understand don't have to see that that's... and be worried that you can't achieve that. Like I've exactly. played trials for a long time now and I can't achieve that. Exactly. And people need to understand that we're not talking about doing a three minute Griffin heart. We're not talking about doing a seven minute you know, speed run through Ethereum archive hard mode. We're talking about learning the mechanics. And if we got to be in there for two hours for everybody to learn it and clear it, that's fine. Yep. And that's okay. And that's where everybody has started. Like Bolt yeah. was saying, everybody starts at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And and we need some of those top end players that have been around forever and had that experience to realize of where they started and don't forget about it and go back down and teach a new person that person then can teach a new person we need to do more of that so i like the fact that they're trying to do that and make it more accessible um but uh it, people have to hold on to it though they have to grab onto it and, and run with it 100%, absolutely 100 percent. and i mean here's the thing you might get started at the very bottom but i've seen many players get started at the very bottom and they're now doing the three minute griffin hearts you know they probably believed in themselves enough to understand hey you know i'm not there right now but why not get to that point you know if you really want it then there are ways to achieve the three minute griffin heart or you know the 10 minute um whatever you know it doesn't matter there's there's ways to achieve that too just because you can't do it now in elder scrolls online doesn't mean that you can't get to that point and i i really do enforce that particular um thought into even the chill team because there's there's a lot of good players on that team that can get stuff done that other players on that team can't at the moment but that doesn't mean that eventually, you know, the whole team isn't going to be ready as a whole to do some. Oh, of those yeah. Harder. Like you're only as strong as your weakest player. So as a team, yeah. you've got to help your teammates become better exactly. and work on what they can do. Like everybody's constantly moving together. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's one thing that I like about Project Vitality is some of the veteran players of the game are actually going down and getting some of these players to 
to do these contents and i think once people get through that i guess the invisible wall they're gonna be a lot better in the end game perspective and maybe they'll try you know some harder content now do you guys think is is there anything that this project is doing that you would change Hmm. Oh, we, we sparked Bob, um, Bob's interest and Bolt's interest. Go ahead, Bolt. <laughs> what would you change about Project Vitality? I don't know. It's, um, get the word out there more, if anything. I don't know. It's, um, I don't know what I would change about it, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's more so the like very community driven, right? So again, the word out there is priority of getting people more involved. But I don't know. I think it's a pretty good system. Um, Bob, is there anything you would change? Uh, my biggest thing is my biggest thing is visibility. So if I if I were Nephis, and this is something that I want to back and put my name on, right? Okay. I'm trying to step into Nephis's shoes. Um, I would be I would be joining some of these teams and streaming them and showing on my stream, look, I'm part of Project Vitality too, mm -hmm. and this is what we're doing. And look, we have ten new players who've never been in a trial before, and here here they are, and we're gonna take them through whatever. Show the community that you're involved in it as well, and you're not just delegating it to other people inside your community. And I don't know if that's what he's doing because uh, I I can't say for sure that I've I don't watch Nephis every day. Um, but if I was Nephis, that's what I would do with it. Have it be more visible. Have it be out there so people know about it instead of just kind of more like whispers inside Discord or Discord channels within Discord channels. Oh, yeah. The, our, the audience you're targeting is not in your Discord channel, most likely. They're in the game playing and questing and don't know what to do next or, you know, exactly. don't know how to even start a trials group. So... You need to be in the game to be getting the attention of these people and and talk to them. Find out, you know, are you ready to do trials? Why haven't you joined trials yet? What is your barrier to you? What stops you from joining and fixing those issues for them to make it more accessible? Yeah, I can I can definitely see what uh, Bob and you and Bold are talking about the visibility of it. Yeah, um, you know. Let's let's see. Um, I guess I'm gonna talk to a couple of people out there and see if you know maybe that can be done because that I I, I haven't seen much of that um, outside of his streams, but maybe you know on a video here and there, maybe that that could be a thing. Um, but you know, going on from this, um, let's let's talk about the new patch and high aisle. Like, what are you guys' thoughts of the just the chapter itself, the the new stuff um, that's out there right now, the map, the volcanic vents? Uh, Jen, what what are your thoughts on that? This zone is gorgeous. <laughs> I came home on what day did it drop? Monday last week? Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday last week press on console here and when i got in the game i ported right over to the new zone and walked out from that first way shrine and i was like holy crap this is gorgeous they did a great job um you find your main story right away i got started on that on my questing of course and i'm finding the the main story very interesting i don't want to spoil it for anybody because you know there's lots of people that even haven't started the quest yet but like anybody me. that has been playing ESO knows that there's a three-banner war going on. And the premise of High Isle is they want to bring together the leaders to discuss peace. So my first thought right away is, oh my god, like... They're gonna kill if this is six, <laughs> They're gonna kill PvP. If this is successful, Cyrodiil's over. Because peace is gonna happen. That's gonna change all of Tamriel, this one chapter. But if they're unsuccessful... Like, what was the point, right? Like, how, how are they going to finish the story? So I'm, so I'm about almost finished now. I think I have two quests left to go. And that question hasn't been answered for me yet on how does this relate to the rest of the game? What's it going to change, if anything? And um, so I'm very interested to finish that. And I'm just really enjoying running around the area. I stop and I get my, my striking locations. Whenever I see them, I stop and do side quests and delves and keep fence. 
I'm a little iffy on the heat vents because I, as far as I can tell through zone chat, there's no real rotation to them. They're random. They and are. when you need to clear one to like clear or finish like, you know, your achievement on the map, you can like have to come back to it over like multiple days to see if it's up, like or keep an eye on it to see if it's up because that that's a little bit of a challenge is you're trying to clear the, the completionist if you're like me. Um and you're just waiting for that one vent to pop where like it seems like other ones somewhere else on the map pop over and over and over again. Bob, what do you what do you think of the new chapter? Um, I mean, the visuals, like like Jen was saying, that I think the visuals are very uh, very pretty. Um, it's very very much a mix of um, like Eridon and Somerset and and Daggerfall. Um, so, it, I, I mean, it, it really what I would you know, picture in my head what a Breton you know island would look like. Um, and I, I think the developers did a fantastic job making that island feel big. Because if you look on the map, yeah. it's itty bitty. But when you pour it mm -hmm. in, it feels large. It feels like a whole environment, which is really, really cool. Um, you know, and that's hard to do as a game developer. Um, and so I, I really appreciate that. Um, now the vents, I wish they had a rotation to them like jen was saying um unfortunately it doesn't seem like they do um the the new mythics that came out in high isle um i think a couple of them are, re oh, yeah. are, are really really nice um you know the the co the serpent's coil um that one looks really really nice uh with the the major berserk and the major uh courage which allow you to kind of swap some gear around on some different players. Um, I'm currently still farming for Mora's Whisper, which is a shoulder piece uh, that gives gives a whole lot of crit percent, um, mainly because I play a lot of Khajiits, so I like the Khajiit race, um, and so I have a lot of crit damage already built in as a Khajiit, and I main a Templar, and so I have crit damage built in as a Templar, so I don't need the kilt to get the crit damage um but uh so i want the crit from from the <clears throat> from the shoulder piece um and then a lot of the um crafted gear uh they have a 12 piece crafted gear i'm not even going to talk about Oaken's. <laughs> 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 well just was reading that one to me today <laughs> yeah whatever the Oaken soul ring whatever everybody wants that one because they all want to be werewolves in pvp yeah um I'm, but the I'm 12 piece that. crafted set is awesome i mean you want to talk about back in the day when everybody was wearing trainee, right? The trainee mm -hmm. set. This is like trainee on like double steroids. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's it's fantastic. Um, you know, just flat stat wise. If you're just looking for the flat stats, um, and it's craftable, which is which is awesome. Um, yeah. So I, I think they've done a lot of good stuff, and you know, they just like every patch they. Nerf and buff some skills and change some skills around on different classes and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people are whinging at all the Dragonite um, uh, nerfs, the sustained nerfs. Nerfs are always going to, like, you know, hurt yeah. some people while benefiting others. There's, there's always going to be nerfs and buffs, and it's just we learn to play around them. Exactly. It's an ever-evolving game. They have to balance stuff. They have to change stuff. Dragonites were overperforming. Um, you know, everybody was was stacking groups of Dragonites. And so they don't want to see that. They want to see diverse groups and they want to see people, you know, work around the mechanics and do certain things. And so, you know, changes had to come. Um, although if you're in a 12 person group, like a trial setting, I don't think you're going to see the, the nerf to the sustain that a lot of people are worried about on the trial dummy. Yeah, because the trial dummy doesn't give you everything, right? <clears throat> that that a twelve person group would so, um, but I mean some of the other changes they made were good. Um, you know the necromancer change, like the the scythe, uh, where it does a the physical one does a bleed finally. Finally, <laughs> right? <laughs> and yeah, I mean and if they, you get chopped in the face by a scythe, I would expect somebody to bleed from that. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then the the siphon. Um, you know, the mortal coil is, is going to be great um, for the tanks if they want to run it. 
some nice recovery with the mortal coil instead of the instead of the si- the other siphon. Um, but even the other siphon gives you magic back, exactly. which is going to be great. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, I'm trying to think. Sorcerer, they did. I mean, they made sorcerer really strong with the crystal shard. Now you get one cast of crystal shard, and you get two in powers. Uh, I mean, for the one cast of it, that's stupid. I mean, it's going to be strong. Um, mm-hmm. The, I mean, the one big thing they did to my Templar class was the the backlash. Um, they increased the morph on the on the magic version of it, which I don't understand. But then they changed my living dark passive, which I use on my Templar tank. For PVE, I love the change. It's great. It's fantastic. I only have to cast it once every ten seconds instead of once every six seconds. It saves me on resources, right? And the heal is negligible to what it was before in PVE content. PVP, the heal gets nerfed by battle, by uh, the the battle stuff. So I, I can see where in PVP it took more of a hit, um, but I, I think that's what they kind of wanted to take it from a mandatory skill that has to be on your bar in PVP to survive as a Templar and change it to you kind of have to build for it if you want to use it mm-hmm. type of thing. Um, I mean, those are my quick, quick and dirty rundown on what I thought about the about the chapter. What about you, Bolt? Like, what do you like about it? Well, the main the main thing is the whole chapter. Because you know how they do the slow release of the chapters these days. But the biggest thing is like I'm going to generalize kind of what Bob's saying, but the hybridization of the whole classes and games. So you can put any skill, doesn't matter mag or stam, whatever you want on your bar. Like that helps out the end game and even the general people who just run around and do their own thing do their questing and stuff they can put on their favorite ability now it doesn't matter whatever it is and they can mess around with it and play with it now that's just opens the game up so much it's been so much brings life back to the game you can do whatever you want testing a lot of things out all that kind of stuff now, the main thing is the dungeons and the trials which i've done a lot of they are a lot of fun new mechanics in them they're fresh they're exciting the new trial is oh my god that that is just a whole ball of fun i could live in there mm-hmm. so they really fun. do bring like the mechanics back from like so many things you've seen like as far back as like blood root forge they do things you know things that happen there are happening in the new trial it's such a mix of mechanics uh-huh it just brings life back into it as well right it's just to the developers did such a good job on doing that stuff and i haven't done much of the questing and stuff but the new card game i at first i was a bit spectacle but now that i've played a fair bit of it i am kind of hooked i it is my husband has a card problem (laughs) Uh it is a lot of fun you can sit there once you understand the game it's really you like it really opens it up and you know i I know we're going to talk probably about cards later, so yeah, I'll we're, keep most we're of gonna, my topics. We're going to talk um, about Tales of Trivia. But that is afterwards. a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I haven't done much of the questing. The air itself, like the amount of craftable, the clam goals everywhere. Oh my god, doing my actual um, mythic farming was actually not that bad. A lot of stuff everywhere. You really didn't have to fight for them. No, which is kind of... That was like the Shadowfen one for the kilt for people who... People who farm that, they don't know about that. People have PTSD from Shadowfit. Well, they're still still having PTSD (laughs) in Merkmire as well, but let's not get into that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, the the PvE side of things, I haven't done much of the PvP side of things. I just go in there roughly, but yeah, the trials and stuff, the endgame content for that, even just going in there in normal is like a lot of fun. Um, It's very kind of uh, team synergy organized, which is really cool like that so bring the team together and work together to get stuff done and you go in there and just have a lot of fun like you know i haven't completed on vet so i got up to the last boss but we had a ball the whole time the whole time in there having a lot of fun so that's my main thing is it's it's great i'm having a lot of fun recommend it oh fair enough um, one thing that I, I do have to agree with Jen on that, um, and Bob is when, when you go into this high aisle chapter, um, you know, it looks so small 
in the map, like in the big like map. On the map. But then the zoomed out Tamriel, yeah, you're just like, oh, okay, so it's Bleak Rock. So it's it's yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like Betnik, Bleak Rock, and then I go in there and I'm like, holy crap, what is this? So the mm -hmm. like it does give so the magic. the Ordon <laughs> Somerset Daggerfall vibes, like Bob was saying, and then the jungle part, because I was like, oh, what is this? Um, it's like it's, two completely it's different zones. Two completely different zones. Like it reminds me of Merkmire, but without the swamp. You know, like it's mm -hmm. just like a jungleish feel. Um, something very new to the game. Like I really liked that particular side of the islands that the the developers did. Um, they did a really good job. I do wish the vents were in some sort of rotation as well. Um, I haven't completed some of them because of that. They, you know, I just don't see them. Um, I've been also farming them for the Oak and Soul Ring, but, um, yeah, Merkmire is gonna wait in that, uh, case for me because I just, I just can't. And then while trying, trying to farm the Serpent Coil, um, lead, it's, it's a breath of fresh air that the fact that, uh, at least for me, I know there's others that had to do, like, 30 something mages guild quests to get it um yeah <laughs> it's last night i was talking to Izzard and he said he did like almost 40 quests of mages guild before he got his i did on my first one <laughs> yeah i did too i did too i was like this i'm, I'm regretting i was <laughs> sorry Izzard. i was so regretting this I was regretting just getting in there because, you know, it would be my luck that it takes me, you know, like 30 or 40 times to get the damn thing. So, it's completely luck. I, like, <laughs> you can't say how long it's going to take. I was like, holy crap, I actually got it on my first try. And then the clam was, you know, I just went up and down the coast, got my lead, and then, you know, went. The the serpent boss is the one that it took me about two hours to get it um but what i was doing is i was literally like killing the boss then hopping into a tells trivia game and then after that killing the boss again because it would be up and then like kind of go smart. back and yeah. forth so mm -hmm. it, it kind of helped the you know the timing go a little bit faster on that but i know bob had <laughs> mages guild shenanigans over oh. there <laughs> Not as bad, not as bad as Izzard. Uh, I got it finally on my second day, like fourteenth or fifteenth. Yeah. That's a, that's pretty guild good. guild mm -hmm. quest. Yeah, yeah. Um, I couldn't believe <clears throat> Izzard went through like forty of those. He said he because he has two accounts, and he said he got on his other account. Um, he shared the the quest with his account, so he each of his eighteen tunes would get like two uh mages go quests each and he's like i pretty much know every single public dungeon uh backwards <laughs> and forwards what right at now. that point <laughs> and i'm like oh my goodness dude like i can't believe he just went through that grind but i mean that ring or not not ring that neck is i think it's gonna be very underrated i don't think a lot mm -hmm. of people have really looked at it and what it could do to the group. You can move SPC completely off the group or oh, all yeah. Rime and put something else like powerful assault. Like it doesn't matter. You can put mm -hmm. any set on Which the is set. nice as a healer mate. I'm pretty tired of my sets. I've been running them so yeah, long. It's been the same the same shenanigans for, for a while. So this is this is actually pretty cool to to have as as a dps be able to give your yourself spc buffs you know potentially by taking damage and you know getting healed and such but i think it's i think it's a sleeper set in my opinion and i don't see many people talking about it and that worries me because there's you know like pillar of nern was a set that not a lot of people talked about and now it's you know it's among the top, you know, 10 sets of a DPS to, to wear. So mm -hmm. I think it's, this is going to be another one of those, you know, pillar and Nern moments. Cause I didn't even give pillar and Nern, you know, a whiff until, um, RPT told me, he's like, Cougar, you need to look at that set and see what that set does. It, it adds more, you know, damage to the DPS. So we tried it out and, 
I mean, I, I can't help but tell everybody Pillar is awesome. So I think it's going to be another one like this. Yeah, sometimes, especially on console, we have to be open to what we run for group synergy set-wise because so many groups are we're slaves to what they've done on PC first because they have logs and they have testing numbers and if they're doing it on PC, it's tested and it works and we have to do what they're doing. But console does run a bit differently sometimes and if, if your group's comfortable doing something else, there's nothing stopping. Build however you want to build with sets that you know work for the group. Yes, especially since you don't have um, the, what is it called, the add-on that you can basically change your gear. I can't remember what it's called, but I wish dressing the, room. the dressing room, yeah. So I wish that the the companion, not the companion, but the ally that, um, that they brought in that can change your gear, you know, the armory system, I wish you could use that inside a trial. On the fly. On the yeah. fly. I mean, if they can on PC and they said, no, we can't do that for console because, you know, we don't want people to, like, have pay to win. And it's just like, well, what do you mean? They already do that, you know? Yeah, exactly. They're already like, doing that. I think a lot of, um, there would be a lot more optimization if they let us do that on console. Um, so. But at the same time, I, I kind of agree that it's it's not a bad thing not having it. Like, you... You plan for what you're going to need for the whole trial as a whole, not the yeah. fight by fight. Yeah, that's true. Like, that's you, true. you make your decision and you stick to it, and it's either successful or not. Like, yeah, but, I mean, you, you have to look at what trial you're running as well. So mm -hmm. if you're running a trial that has a ton of trash poles between boss fights, mm -hmm. having a few people just be in AoE gear will probably speed up your entire run because you're not single target yeah. Down all these ad poles and they're dying. So yeah, the boss may take you an extra, I don't know, we'll just be generous to say 30 seconds to kill. Because you got a couple people in AoE instead of single target. But the AoE fights, your trash bolts, are 45 seconds faster. So right. overall, you're saving yourself 15 seconds for every ad pole. And by the end of it, you may actually end up being quicker than you would have had you, you know, had you set up straight for single target or straight for from the dummy type of type of right? situation yeah now unfortunately with dressing room you know like you guys mentioned pc kind of has the best of both worlds they can they can right before they pull you know they can click a button it's key bound and everything kind of everything out changes and, everything and yeah. Fly, right yeah uh, also you know back to what you were saying jen on you know things on the pc are tested and council has to look at things differently listen if you're doing something exactly the same as somebody else who's already really good at it, you're never going to beat them. You have to change something. You have to figure out what they missed and do it differently from somebody if you look if you're looking to beat that group. If you're if that's your end goal anyway. Your end goal is to beat that group's time, score, whatever. And that's why you see a lot of these scores on the leaderboards. They're all within a couple hundred points of each other. So close to each other. They're all running the same stuff. It's just like who pressed the buttons stuff. faster. Exactly. Yeah. It's like who yeah. got lucky Who got lucky with a couple of extra crits here yeah. and there. <laughs> who had like right? the better RNG for where things no, were and where people were standing. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody's really looking at it and going, okay, what did they miss? What can we change around? What's, what sets or skills or class or whatever can we bring in that they didn't have yeah. that may change something for us down the road? And maybe it is longer, but you don't know until you try it out, right? And I think that's what a lot of the end game is missing. Um, this end game, you know, trial, this very small, I mean, we're talking percents of percents of yeah. percents. Very you know, we're talking... Yeah, it's very yeah, small. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's all like a numbers game. I think yep. we only have yeah. maybe two groups in console, at least in PS4 and A, that are like at that point of each other. Yeah. Um, I mean, we used to have more, but a lot of them went to PC. And then, I mean, and PC is a little bit higher, but yeah, it's yeah. it's very, very small percentage. And I mean, those are very <laughs> bold words, Bob. Like, they really should be looking at what did they miss? Because you never know, they might have missed something. Um, and that's why, like, it's too bad we couldn't have JPY here today, because he's great at theory crafting. Oh, There's some players in the game, Bolt is also, where they take a look at sets that are available in the game, and they think outside of 
the besides box. what they've seen on YouTube and PC. They're like, how could this be utilized? And what would this work with? And what situations could this be done? You know, yeah. theory crafting is huge for people that understand, you know, the mass amount of sets that are in the game, what options are available to them and how do they work? Right. Yeah, it's, it's a shame because JPY is like the perfect person to to do that he has done that a lot in the chill team and you know him and i have butt heads at times because i'm like that's not gonna work you know and he like changes that mind for me and he you know shows me that it will work he's like here let me show you, you know? and like he gives you the numbers exactly. and works it out like if you have if you have this class and this class and, and they're wearing this, here's what's going to happen. Exactly. And it, yeah. it doesn't even have to be the numbers. It can just be like how fast they, they did this, you know, or how fast they melted, you know, Sororia or whatever on, you know, VCR. So, I mean, it's, it's, he's really good at, at that. And we need players like him in leadership positions because I think it'll be it'll make the the small percentage of the end game that is ready for those trifectas and speed runs and such, it make that percentage a little bit more competitive. And I mean, I'm I'm not mad, but like we need we kind of need that in the game right now. Um, we do. So instead of just copying what someone put on YouTube that yeah, you think to yourself, exactly. Like what kind of like what Bob was touching on. <laughs> No. Sorry and that's a lot of information to know. I don't begin to be able to memorize all the sets available and what they do. I'm like, and especially as a support role, I'm locked into like there's so many sets available that the team needs me to run. Mm. Um, but I, I I listen to our raid leads and, and listen when they're putting like comp groups together for you know who's going to be where and what why. I mean, but I really respect that. Like that's important that people you know, take the time to learn that and share that knowledge with their team and you know one also um one other thing that is a shame for is that jp is not here for tales of tribute but we have both <laughs> so <laughs> well, where's where's the kenny rogers the gambler we should be playing that for both exactly. i'm working on my uh my titles for the uh card breaker uh title <laughs> card breaker <laughs> Wait, is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, is that things. a thing? Like, is that a title? <laughs> there are there are card titles the, everywhere. I've been like, I've been sitting there hovering over it, doing some research and stuff of it. Uh, what's it called? This in here. I think I scroll past it. But yeah, there's a lot of card. There's titles a whole like stuff. achievement section in yeah, your journal think, just for trials of tribute. I think there's some tribute. dies in there as well, right? Um, I yeah. believe so. It's it's pretty cool. Well, I mean, I want to I want to start first in the Tales of Tribute because Go ahead. this is this is like very end game break. Hold on, give me. them background. <laughs> the Tales of Tribute is is the new card game that in High Isle Cinemax introduced to the game. Basically, it's a card uh, deck building game, and that's that's the best way to describe that. You have um, the five cards in the middle. And then you have four patrons and those four patrons each have individual abilities you can only play one patron ability per turn and unless you have like a card that says you may play an additional patron on that turn um i actually have like a whole how to on on our youtube channel and it's it's there to basically you know if you don't know what you're doing to kind of guide you a little bit and show you what kind of the cards do and how to play that game if anybody has played ascension um the deck building game uh called ascension that's probably the closest thing um i know some people are like oh it's yeah, close to magic the gathering card, yes and no that's what i was gonna say about giving background is first of all cougar is a avid irl card player yes. and collector <laughs> So when it came to there being a card game in the game, like this was right up her alley. Well, JPY is also a Magic the Gathering yep, player, yep. so he, you know, both him and I are we're really excited to have this card game. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, it's like Magic the Gathering," but it really isn't. Um, the the game that really pushed it for me out there is Ascension. So if you guys don't know what Ascension is. Um, you know, just look it up. The Ascension deck building game. There's even an app on iOS for it. Um, and it's a, it's basically like Tales of Tribute, but without the patrons. And you do a lot of cool things. 
And the Crow deck in Tales of Tribute is absolutely busted, by the way. The more cards you can draw with that deck, the better you're going to have. Now, you have to be careful because you can be setting up the Crow deck so much and, you know, in so many turns. And then you get overwhelmed because your opponent is building a prestige. So you have to be careful with that. But if your opponent's not building a prestige and they're letting you freaking get every single crow deck, if, card, it's momentum. Yeah, yeah, get it going. Yeah, if they're letting you build that momentum. That deck, like the the Duke of Crows deck, at the end, if your opponent isn't building prestige at a good rate each turn, go for it because it's bonkers. It draws you cards and. That's one of the things that I said in that video is if you can draw cards to get um, more cards and, and do everything in your deck, if you can recycle your deck over and over again, that's the best way to win if your opponent is not building up prestige at a good pace um, during the turns. And if you guys can get that uh, the green deck, that patron is actually pretty busted too because you have to pay two power to bring him to favor you and you get a coin every single turn like you start off with one coin in your pool i don't think people have actually looked at that patron very well and noticed like how powerful that guy is it's it's pretty i don't know both of you have played that patron before but i have um, I don't have it, but I've played against other players that have it, and I just <laughs> decimated them because they let me have that patron in my favor, and it that one gold makes a difference in the early game. It adds up, right? After a couple of hands. Mm -hmm. In the early game, if you can get that patron Thanks. in your favor in the early game, and keep them in your favor in the early game. They're gonna, you're gonna be able to get these six, seven, eight, you know, cost cards that are gonna be beneficial to you in the late game. Um, speaking of late game, Bob, your buddy side node, he was talking about one game that he played uh, yesterday, and he said that <coughs> there's a card called Rally, which gains you four uh, four power return. He said that he killed yes. all the other cards and he just had five cards that he was playing. He just kept yep. rallying and rallying. And I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's a way to win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He kept that. He has a card. Like, so there's a card. I don't know what it is because I'm not huge in the Tales of Tribute yet. Um, but basically, it kills two cards that, that are in the shared pile mm -hmm. or in the tavern. And draws one card, right? Yeah. Or, or something like that. And so, yeah, he just kept playing Rally over and over and, and over, over and over and over. <laughs> <laughs> and he won with Rally. And that's essentially the only card you played the entire time. I I just started laughing when I heard that in the stream. And I was like, oh, my goodness. That is a way. That is a way to win. It's completely different strategy from what everybody's doing. And I mean, to be honest, if somebody does that to me and I let him, I let them do that, then they deserve the win, like one hundred percent. Because this is busted and nuts. Bolt, what do you think about this game? Let's let's get let's get that. Okay, you asked me, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I just my so one thing is, uh, let me go back a little bit because there's a deck in this in this game as well that you didn't mention and it gives you a card that does nothing it absolutely does nothing it just goes in your hand and this guy was playing that he played that hand and i used his own deck against him and he had only 10 cards and five of those cards were nothing cards and i won he had four prestige and i had 50 and i absolutely annihilated just have to say that it was really funny but the game itself is really good. There's so many strategies you can do to it. Um, I do want to touch on something, though. I think they, as good as the game is, I think they missed the ball a little bit on it. I think they could have done the card game a little bit differently, which would have been 
which would have brought the whole gang together, which is your cards are like the end bosses of dungeons and trials. And you have to farm them like the monster sets. And you could do it like that and change like have environmental cards. Like if you built like an ice deck and you could have like ice environment stuff. And the other and the other guy could use your cards as well, the same kind of aspect. But then you have to go back and farm dungeons to get cards. They would be tradable. All that kind of jazz would have been fun. Like imagine like, you know, having like an ice dragon from Sunspire as one of your cards and it has an attack thing. Because I, from my card experience, I like to see like a whole lot of like agent cards on my, on the table. And I like to overwhelm my opponent with a lot of cards like that. And something about attacking other cards and stuff is pretty enjoyable to me. And I feel like that would have brought the whole game together for a card game and made old content new again and exciting. Um, but they didn't do that. But what they have at the moment is really good. What they've got um, there's so many different... I've been farming cards and fragments and looking up where you can farm other decks and stuff. And I decided that I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to wait out the people who do farm it and then play their own decks against them, which is really fun. It's and I be a only villain bully player. <laughs> yeah, I only discovered today that there was a whole rank system and stuff in it, and I've been, like, farming my ranks in there. But Trails of Tributor have been a lot of fun, and, uh, oh, yeah, I uh, can't wait to see people out there, and definitely down. If you want to battle, battle me. I'm ready for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost, <laughs> I'm almost to purple right now in the ranking system, so that's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I only discovered it today, so I started doing it, and like, it's very like I've had. A, I think I've lost like two games today, and that was only because on the draw at the start they had like such a good start that it was so hard to come back from. That I almost did, but yeah, they just you yeah, know. There, there's luck in okay. there's luck in the in the mix on on that game too. Oh yeah, I, for, I forget what it is, but you know the one that you buy like it costs you two coins, but you get three coins, and it goes in your hand. That card. There was two of them on the tavern, and the guy instantly bought both of them at the start of the game. I'm like, well, oh, that, yeah. that pretty much screwed me straight away. That happened to me two games in a row. And I was like, wow, that's so hard to come back from. And then everything else that was on the tavern was like seven to like nine coin. I'm like, well, I'm just going to have to do Ritz and just hope. And I tried to play the patron game and try to win through patrons. But he was smart, and he never played an agent card, so I couldn't get the last um, patron to win. If he played an agent card, he would sacrifice it straight away. I was like, damn, that guy's kind of... But yeah, that's... there's so many different ways of playing it in strategy. I like messing with my opponent kind of thing. you got to pay attention to what cards they pick up. And there's a lot of layers to it once you get really into it. At first, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Like the first couple of games, you're just spamming X. And... But if you really take the time, it is very rewarding. Oh, of course, you know. Yeah, that's pretty much and <clears throat> i did i did naughty things with that bewilderment card um yeah to, that's, to what I, that's what i was talking about how i yeah yeah that I, guy played it and i gave half his hand with that and he didn't know what to do with it <laughs> well you can actually <laughs> sacrifice it to the you know yeah, you the, to the writ uh the treasury yeah and i don't think yeah, some i didn't know how to know him. that so no, <clears throat> but and there was a there was a hand that the guy got, and he had four four of windowed those. ones, and he only could and he only played one card, and he was like one coin card, and it was so I was like this poor guy, oh, <laughs> just, that's no yeah. Yeah, I did that to somebody. And, uh, I did that to somebody as well, but it wasn't to that extent. Like they didn't have like ten cards, and just you know five of those were that. Yeah, they yeah he couldn't even get a number on the board. It, it really like struggled them to get the cards in the middle because they were higher costing cards but i mean mm -hmm. i ended up winning that match it was but it wasn't like that demoralizing i guess <laughs> to where you can't just buy anything um i you mean play, but... jen have you played the okay. game like in any like ranked or whatever or have you no, been so I'm still in the starting phase. I've just done my tutorial, and I'm still at the phase where I don't know what's going on. And I'm just trying to, like, I've had some tips from Bolt already about, like, you know, get rid of your yeah. coins right away, put those to the treasury, and turn them into writs. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I'm still in the learning how to play and not really fully understanding it yet. But 
it is fun. It's definitely a, an activity that I'm happy they added to the game as like something passive to do. I find it takes a little bit of time, and one of the things that bothers me a little bit about it is that your notifications and your heads up chat display is hidden while you're in a game. Yeah. So the part that you know frustrates me a little bit is I could miss out on like somebody messaging me, "Hey, let's go do this thing." I, I wouldn't have. Maybe I'd back out of the game and just like go do that thing instead, you know? Yeah, that's. I think that's one of the things that they kind of missed um, by doing it. And I, I hope a lot of people um, say something about that. Um, to let us at least have whispers or like guild chat, you know, not necessarily zone chat, but like at least you know guild text chat and whispers available. Like you tap on the bottom left or something. An option yeah. even that yeah. you can turn it on you if you wanted to. So off. yeah, exactly. You know? And obviously, maybe there would be some penalty for backing out of a game, a timeout or something, or well, yeah, like the, knows, like but... the, the dungeon finder where it's like eight yeah. minutes or something like that. That's that's fine. Yeah. I mean, well, there there is a penalty if you if you um, forfeit or, okay. or give up on yep. the game. There there is a penalty. Yeah, you can't you can't queue for a ranked match for I think like just like done just like ten minutes or fifteen oh, minutes. Okay. I, like I didn't realize there was yeah. a penalty. I mean, I haven't left um a match yet so that's probably why so that's good to know i mean and i'm sure there's something like reason for that too like it's built in so for example when you're doing ranked you don't want to be like boosting your friend you know mm -hmm. i'm gonna keep playing you over and over again and just purposely losing yeah well i don't think you can play your friends ranked anyway so that's no i don't believe it's you completely... no, it's yeah. Yeah. So okay you i mean there's no way to boost in a way um, also, there was an exploit that was on the forums. <laughs> they banned a bunch of people for doing it with Tales of Trivia, which, I mean, it's insane. Yeah, no to any new players, never take advantage of exploits, not worth it. But yeah, they already, they already <laughs> banned people for exploiting the game, if that tells you how Cinemax is like, you know, hammer on the thing. But, um, so here in the, we're, we're almost done here. One uh, good thing that I wanted to talk to people about is that we do have a Discord. If you're part of the guild, um, you know, come on over on our Discord. 